Now, part of the、uh, downward economic、uh, development pressure that we suffer at this moment is、uh, a kind of a sense of being pessimistic, and for that, I mean,、um, China is facing the middle income trap instead of、uh, the beautiful dream of the middle class, and I don't know why many Chinese elites. Are very cautious as to the use of a middle class in their vocabulary because they say, "Ah,、oh, this is a phrase that we copy from the Western political vocabulary, and that means,、uh, you know, free elections,、uh, colored revolutions, and so so on and so forth." Even the NGOs are called into question because,、uh, you know,、uh, Professor Huntington says,、uh, "A country is likely to have."、Uh, Devastating political instability, not in the stage of their early development, but rather at the stage of their relatively being rich. What do you, what do you make of his analysis? Is that the trap? No. Well, the, <laughs> I think what if we uh, uh, find common ground by what commonly is called the、uh, trap of the middle class, that is to get from a middle income country to come to a high income country. Like the U.S. or you know even Switzerland and Liechtenstein. In, in fact, from the perspective of the economists,、uh, the what we call middle income trap is actually the exhaustion of、uh, labor dividends、uh, at the stage of、uh, labor intensive manufacturing and、uh, do you know the Lewis turning point? It, it, it talks about the、uh, labor dividends of、uh, such a. Populous country like China, where you have、uh, millions of migrant workers flocking from rural areas to the more developed coastal areas, but that phase, I'm afraid, is coming to an end with China's emphasis laying on, for example,、uh, um, innovation and the next wave of urbanization. Talking about the development of service industry instead of uh, uh, environmental decline, that's the natural result of、uh, labor-intensive manufacturing. Manufacturing, Doris, do you agree? Why don't I, I? I think we should simplify. I think it is, of course, much easier for a country to reach the first step, to become what China did, a manufacturing country, because、uh, you have a, a huge amount of labor force, and the labor force can be put on a, a on an assembly line, and、uh, they they can be taught, and the production is moving. But as you now plan and and are very much uh, uh, directed into becoming an innovation nation, you cannot simply say, "Okay, you are the next innovator and you are innovating this." This is not possible because innovation has a lot to do with creativity, has a lot to do with individuality, and. You know, a little bit.、Um, we were talking about innovation a lot, and how you know what's really driving innovation, and. Uh, education, <laughs> of course, education. But you have good education in memorizing things. But when it comes to stepping, stepping out of the mold of、uh, mass education, how do you then really become creative? How do you break the mold and become individual? That's the that's the problem. That's why innovation incubators. And the world tells you it's like chicken, you know, like egg innovators. You put in ten eggs, and you have ten chicken. But you cannot put in ten entrepreneurs into an incubator, and automatically you have ten, ten innovations. In innovations. <laughs> you know, it's not that easy. As we were talking about the importance of education.、Uh, Fortunately, younger generation enjoy equal access to the internet that makes their、uh, universal education easy and possible. Thank you very much. We have to leave you there for the moment. You are watching dialogue with、uh, the Nesbits, who are the authors of a newly released book titled "Global Game Change: How the Global Southern Belt Will Reshape Our World." We'll be back and discuss these issues. Please stay with us.